Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Sagarika Bhattacharya, a student of MSc Food Science and Nutrition in Avinashi Lingam Institute for Home Science and Higher Education for Women. Today's nutrition communication session will be on the topic of obesity. Obesity and overweight are defined as an accumulation of excess body fat to the extent that may impair health. This occurs when the intake is greater than the energy expenditure through physical activity. The excess energy is stored in the body as adipose tissue. A body weighing 10 to 19% above the ideal body weight is classified as overweight and a body weighing 20% or more above the ideal body weight is classified as obese. Now coming to BMI. BMI stands for body mass index. It is a measure that relates weight to height. BMI is equal to weight in kg divided by height in meters squared. It is used to assess obesity. According to the World Health Organization, a person having a BMI of 25 kg per meter square or above is considered overweight and that of 30 kg per meter square or, or above is considered obese. Now let's look at the WHO classification of weight status. A body mass index of less than 18.5 kg per meter square is considered as underweight. That in the range of 18.5 to 24.9 kg per meter square is considered in the normal range. A BMI between 25 to 29.9 kg per meter square is considered overweight and a BMI equal to or above 30 kg per meter square is considered obese. Now, obese can be classified into three different classes. Obese class 1 is denoted by a BMI of 30 to 34.9 kg per meter square. Obese class 2 is denoted by 35 to 39.9 kg per meter square. And obese class 3 is denoted by a BMI equal to 40 or above kg per meter square. Now, let's look at the different types of obesity. These are android obesity and gynoid obesity. Android obesity is denoted by an apple shaped body as you can see in the diagram. In this case, there is excess fat on the abdomen. It is more common in men and is associated with metabolic disorders. On the other hand, gynoid obesity is denoted by a pure shaped body as you can see in the image. In this case, excess fat is on the thigh and buttocks. It is more common in women and is not associated with metabolic disorders. Next, coming to the risk factors of obesity. Obesity is a complex multifactorial chronic disease developing from interactive influences of numerous factors, social, behavioral, psychological, metabolic, cellular and molecular or genetic. The risk factors are genetic factors, age and sex, eating habits, physical activity, stress, endocrine factors, trauma, prosperity and civilization. Now coming to the very important question which is can vitamin D deficiency cause obesity? The answer is yes. Vitamin D receptors play a central role in adipose calcium metabolism and energy homeostasis. Both of these indicate an association between vitamin D and increased risk of obesity. Several studies have shown incidences of obese people having low serum vitamin D levels. This is a diagram which denotes how obesity and vitamin D are interlinked. Next, coming to the complications of obesity. Obesity has short term and long term health consequences that worsen as the condition worsens. Some of these are type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, stroke, heart disease, gallbladder disease, osteoarthritis, poor wound healing, sleep apnea, high cholesterol and triglycerides, metabolic syndrome, cancer and even depression. So now let's learn how to manage obesity. The diet should be adequate in all other nutrients except calories. It should consist of all five food groups. Water can be consumed in unlimited quantities. Carbonated and sweetened beverages should be avoided. Fruit juices, coffee and tea can be consumed without sugar. Alcohol should be restricted. Red meat should be avoided. Fatty portions of chicken should be discarded. Fish can be included in the diet. A restricted amount of eggs can also be included. 
skim milk should be used in the diet probiotics with low fat can be included butter cream and ice cream should be avoided and cheese can be used sparingly plenty of colorful fruits and vegetables should be included in the diet green leafy vegetables should be a part of every meal this will ensure to meet the requirement of antioxidants on a low calorie diet the diet should be rich in fiber meals can be started with salads the diet should include whole grains sprouted grams unprocessed foods and natural foods in raw form fruits can be taken as snack items instead of juice or pulp whole fruits should be consumed the diet should be low in fat no saturated and trans fatty acids to be included in the diet fried foods should be avoided gravy dishes having saturated fat should be avoided junk foods like pizzas chips and french fries should be strictly avoided foods naturally rich in oil like nuts should be taken in restricted amounts the diet should be low in sugar sweets cakes and chocolate should be restricted strictly concentrated foods like condensed milk honey and sugar syrups should be avoided methods of cooking should be modified boiling poaching steaming pressure cooking and simmering with no additional fat should be the methods of cooking to reduce the intake of food serving size can be reduced small size plates and ladles can be used for this purpose food should be consumed regularly in measured amounts meals should not be skipped snacking foods between meals should be avoided feasting should be avoided fasting should be avoided as one tends to eat more food later as and lastly physical exercise should be a part of daily life so that's it with today's uh, session thank you for listening patiently we'll meet again in the next session do not forget to subscribe to my channel and like and share the video